So within the Earth System Governance Project, what does architecture mean for me? Architecture means a whole system of institutions that are valid and active in a given issue area of world politics. These institutions can be many different things. Norms, principles, regulations, procedures, in particular decision-making procedures, but also organizations as a whole. And we're not only talking about public institutions here, we're also talking about private or transnational institutions. All these different arrangements make up the architecture of global governance. Now, within this larger context of architecture, my work focuses on a phenomenon that has become of growing concern for academics and policymakers alike, namely the increasing fragmentation of global governance. This fragmentation is particularly dominant in environmental governance architectures because these involve a large number of different stakeholders, and they affect a large number of different stakeholders, and they are also very, very complex subject matters. Now, what is fragmentation? Over the last years, we have witnessed a considerable proliferation of new institutions. But that's not everything. On top of this, we also witness that existing institutions have significantly widened their mandate. All this has led to more and more institutions addressing particular environmental topics in global governance. This, in turn, has led to interlinkages, overlaps, and sometimes also conflicts among these different institutions. Take climate change as an example. Fifteen years ago, we would have said that the only location, or by far the only hub of global climate politics, is the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and its Kyoto Protocol. Today, we speak very differently about climate politics. There are many other arenas that also address climate change, some of them not even predominantly geared towards climate change. Think of the World Trade Organization, the United Nations Security Council, the World Bank, all taken decisions that have severe impact on global climate governance today. And on top of all this, you have more and more private governance arrangements, public-private partnerships on renewable energies. All this today makes up global climate governance and the fragmentation thereof. To be clear, climate change is but one example. We find fragmentation in about any domain of global environmental politics today. So against this backdrop, I would argue that Fragmentation is an unavoidable or ubiquitous structural phenomenon of global environmental governance today and maybe even of global governance, also of other domains. However, the degree of fragmentation may vary considerably across issue areas. Now, since fragmentation is such a ubiquitous phenomenon, we as researchers should not discuss longer whether or not we want fragmentation to be out there. We have to ask different questions. And four questions in particular um, I and my colleagues have been working on over the past 10 to 15 years. The first one is, what is the degree of fragmentation in a given issue area of world politics? What is out there? How can we map that? The second one is, what are the consequences of fragmentation? Good ones, bad ones, positive and negative. Third, how can we explain fragmentation? How can we explain what we observe with the help of theories of international relations? And fourth and finally, should we do something about it? What are responses to fragmentation? With regard to the first topic, taking stock of the degree of fragmentation, I worked with colleagues on a typology. So we distinguished different forms of fragmentation, integrative, cooperative, and conflictive. As criteria to distinguish these different forms, we did not only look at the number of institutions for a given issue area, but we also asked questions like, how legally coherent are they? Um, is there a major institutional center? And so forth. And we found that a field like biodiversity governance actually features quite a conflictive degree of fragmentation, whereas, for instance, ozone layer depletion exhibits only minor forms of fragmentation. The second theme, consequences, refers to a pivotal insight. Institutional fragmentation matters. It may have significant implications for the development and consequences of international institutions today. 
Let me put this differently. We cannot do research about an international institution today without taking into account its wider institutional embeddedness. If we want to really find out about the generation, the development and the effectiveness of that very institution. So how does fragmentation matter? I and my colleagues found that fragmentation indeed may have several positive effects. That's very important to me to stress that. Fragmentation is not a negative thing per se. It may lead, for instance, to a new type of division of labor among institutions. And very simply put, the more platforms you have, the more chances you have to include other or new actors, like private actors, and give them a chance to have a say in global climate governance, for instance. On the other hand, we have to be aware of the fact that fragmentation may have negative consequences. For instance, coordination gaps between the many different institutions or legitimacy gaps. Think of a new trend in global governance of all these new clubs evolving. Clubs being, for example, the G20, where you have a limited number of countries deciding upon very important matters. And very often then, you find that other types of countries, least developed countries in particular, are locked out from these decision processes. A third major theme is causes. What are the reasons for the fragmentation we observe in a field like global climate governance? I think it is important to find out about these reasons so we can make informed policy recommendations. It's not good enough to just say we want more coordination. We need insights into what is really causing fragmentation. These explanations do not have to start from zero. We have theories, institutional theories in particular, that we may adapt to this new phenomenon. Think, for example, of the constellation of power. Think of competing knowledge claims. Think of competing discourses. All this can help us explain why some fields of global governance are more fragmented than others. Finally, Researchers need to work more on the responses to fragmentation. This includes the question, do we need to respond of, uh, to it at all? As I mentioned before, fragmentation may have many positive consequences. But then there's also dysfunctionalities. So what can we do to tackle them? One possible response are package deals. Careful linkages across debates in different arenas can help produce additional trade-offs across these arenas, and they can also help break some of the deadlocks in which discussions in these different fora have ended up in. I illustrated the potential of such a package deal for the relationship between the United Nations climate regime and the World Trade Organization, describing potential docking points that you have there between issues like technology transfer, intellectual property rights, genetic resources, even agricultural subsidies. All these topics in one way or the other are touched upon in both regimes. Another option is institutional orchestration. What does that mean? It means that one institution has to seize the opportunity to navigate and coordinate the patchwork of other institutions in which it is embedded. For instance, we should start rethinking the role of the United Nations climate regime within such a patchwork. In fact, on top of its other activities, the United Nations climate regime, or better put, the UNFCCC secretariat, could play such a role as a navigator or orchestrator by providing more benchmarks or clearinghouse services. For example, for international climate technology initiatives, for emissions trading systems and for unilateral trade measures. So as you see, there is a lot to do about this topic of institutional fragmentation in global environmental politics. And I welcome you to join us in this exciting research agenda here in the Earth System Governance Project.